There are certain moments when the winds of popular phrase will shift with a pace and in a direction that few have anticipated. The result of this being, we get bands and musicians from the unlikeliest places that make big differences in our lives. In this documentary, we will look at four bands and how they've influenced their era and the people of today. Let's begin with the 1970s. The Glam Brigades were joined by the security risk-inducing boy bands, the gliding hordes of disco nutters and the all-spitting, all-pogoing punk movement. The Royal Outside was jobless, poor, or on strike. For a frustrated generation, punk offered fulfilment without conforming to society's mainstream conservative ethics. Sex Pistols played to Manchester with their raucous presence in 1976 and gave citizens of Manchester a taste for rebellion that comes from punk. A product of this memorable game was the Buzzcocks. Buzzcocks are an English punk rock band formed in Greater Manchester in 1976. They are primarily remembered for their singles, a string of rugby hits which combines strong grasp of pop song craftsmanship with rapid fire to punk rock energy. On to the 1980s, what's changed? Electronic came onto the scene along with rap, acid house and Aitken and Waterman. For Manchester, it was the birth of the Smiths. The Smiths were a rock band formed in 1982 in Manchester. The band consisted of Morrissey, Johnny Marr, Mike Joyce and Andy Rourke. Hugely influential, the Smiths lasted over five years, 1982 to 1987, releasing four studio albums and three compilation albums. After the band split in 1987, six albums have been released. Next, the 1990s. The Smiths, who had disbanded acrimoniously in 1987, as you will remember if you've been listening, appear to have become deeply unfashionable. The pops get plunged into confusion as faceless dance music hits the charts. Solution? Get more indie bands. Oasis were an English rock band that formed in Manchester in 1991. The group was formed by Liam Gallagher, Paul Arthur, Paul McGuigan and Tony McCallum, who were later joined by Liam's older brother, Noel Gallagher. Its members were signed to independent record label Creation Records and released their record-setting debut album, Definitely Maybe, in 1994. The following year, the band recorded the critically acclaimed What's the Story in Morning Glory with their new drummer Alan White that led to international success, which was propelled by singles Wonderwall, Don't Roll Back Remember, and Champions League Forever. In 1997, Oasis released a third album and became the fastest selling album in UK chart history, besides Michael Jackson's Bad. The 1975 were a Manchester based indie rock band which formed in 2012. The group played several names before setting from 1975 to 2012. The band consists of Matthew Healy, Adam Hamm, Ross McDonald, and George Daniel. Skill class and style, a balance by the power. Show you never at one. They blow key on the profile. Get your business is known. Yeah, well, I mean, like, there's quite a lot of bands like Stone Roses, uh, Oasis, Elbow, Carty, uh, tons of them. The Manchester bands I know, I guess. Probably because I'm a little bit older, I know Buzz Cops, Smiths, um, Stone Roses, Oasis. I guess that sort of thing. We're not totally up on any uh, I think it's really important where you're from, you know, the bands from your same neck of the woods. Um, I like the fact that a band might like write to Dallas. Because that's something that the local fans will get into and they'll go, oh yeah, that means something to me. I do think that's important. I think a lot of people do it up already. In my opinion, I think we should clear away from Manchester. It's been a matter of time in Manchester. I think it's a I don't think it's changed that much. I think it should change a bit more. Yeah. The bands who come out of Manchester are like all together. The same, like another shadow of like Oasis. Like, and then you get bands like that more than Do you know, we hear a lot of guys come in wanting to play the guitar or something, and they're very often playing stuff that I've probably heard 
in the past 20 or 30 years. So yes, there's new styles emerging, but I think a lot of guys still go back to some of the older bands. I mentioned the Smiths, Johnny Marr is still a guitar hero for a lot of people, and they'll still reference him when they try and learn. So It's nice to think music's evolving, but you'll always get a nod back to older stuff. I think it's important to realise that if you've never heard something before, it's still new music to you. If you made it this many minutes in, and I'm wondering, what's the point? I'll tell you, how have these bands influenced us? The Buzzcocks are commonly regarded as an important influence on the Manchester music scene, the indie record label movement, and the pop punk, punk rock, and indie rock genres in general. The widely covered Ever Fallen In Love remains as one of their best songs. Pete Yorn's cover was used in the popular animated film Shrek 2. The increasing influence of the Smiths has stretched well beyond the parameters of popular music. The songs that the band recorded have, for instance, provided the inspiration for work in the fields of video art and literature. For example, United Take Over. Comic stories inspired by the Smiths by Sean de Montbrun contains graphic takes on Girlfriend in a Coma. Morrissey's Fever Hate was released six months after the band split and he still inspires young people today. The popular bands of today, like Maroon 5, have stated that their music was inspired by Oasis. And the 1975, well, they're quite new on the scene. In due course, their music will probably inspire other artists. But for now, they will just lift the moods of all who listen to them. Salt water, well